What's up everyone, it's Bucky and welcome to your 13th tutorial in C. And in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a truly random number generator. And if you guys are saying, alright, didn't you teach us that last time? Well I did, but, uh, well, you'll see. It's a little surprise in store for you. Now, just to tell you guys pretty much what I'm going to do, let's go ahead and first let's execute and run this program. Now, the truth behind computer random number generators is that a computer is only a computer. There is no way in the world that a computer can truly generate a random number since it has to follow a pattern. It's just made up of a bunch of electronics and it has to be told exactly what to do. So whenever we build a basic random number generator, although these look like random numbers, it's actually following a very precise algorithm to develop these random numbers. So if you see 41, 18,000, 6,000, 26,000, and then you go ahead and run this again, it's going to follow that exact same algorithm again, which is pretty random, but the algorithm is the exact same set of random numbers. 40, 18,000, 6,000, 26,000, exactly like before and this is pretty much supports the fact that there is no way you can tell a computer to generate random numbers it doesn't have a brain it can't pick it off the top of its head so it has to follow the circuits and whatever it does to follow the stink pattern so as you can see or I say that a lot don't I or what I'm trying to say is this is not a really desirable thing we want so the closest thing we can do is trick the computer or at least not letting a human being able to predict the random number of the computer. And if you say, alright, what's so bad if the human can predict it? Well, say you're building like a slot machine for a casino in C and you really don't want the human to predict that or if you're building a game or anything. So to do this, we need to start at a new value every time and to do this again I said that I feel like I repeat myself today we need to make something called a seed now when you seed a random number it gives it a new value instead of the old algorithm it's used to in the seed a random number is s r a n d this means seed random and what this line of code does right here is whatever parameter you type in, this can be any number, it's going to use that value and input it somehow into its algorithm to generate a list of truly random numbers. So let's say, uh, let me just put 12, just because the 1 and 2 are close to each other and I'm lazy. And as you can, or I'm going to stop saying that, you got 40 last time, then like, I, don't, I can't remember what it was, but it started with 41. Now you see it starts with 77 and gives you a whole list of random numbers. So that's what seeding a random number does. But the problem with this is it doesn't just work all the time. When you seed a random number, again, I ran this program once more and it gave you the same list of numbers. What seeding a random number does is take this and use it as a variable in the algorithm so it changes it up a bit but it still doesn't uh, change it so it's totally unique each time so it just pretty much gives you a, a different algorithm so how can we seed a number that changes every time the computer runs the program well to do that we need to think for a second what is a value that we can put in here to have it change every time. We could have the we could put a scanf variable in there and have the user type it, but we really don't want that. That's not going to be useful. So the only thing that I can think of that changes every single second is time. So let's go ahead and write our time variable in our parameter for our seed variable. So to do that, go ahead and put time and in your parameters go ahead and put null because we don't want it to have any variables. And what this will do is this. It'll take the time, which is, is it's actually a number in how many seconds since like January 1st, so many years ago. This is actually a number that changes every second. 
and it's going to take it and put it in your entire seed variable. So this is going to pretty much take a random variable and throw it into this entire random number generating algorithm. So me, you, or no one knows exactly what number it is. So this is how, let me separate this so you can see, is how you use time, which is an ever-changing variable. You don't have to worry about it. And insert it into your seed so you can have a truly random number generator. So let me go ahead and show you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and compile this. And the first time we run it, we get 9,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. Now let's go ahead and run it again. And if this worked out perfectly, they should be different. And come on. So we got 9,000. Uh oh. That's what we started last time. 16,000, 12,000, 28,000. Nice. So that is how you build a truly random jum jumper numerator. What? Number generator. <laughs> jumper numerator. Oh, crack myself up. So again, that is how you do that by using a seed with your time parameter to seed a variable in your random number generator. So again, study this tutorial, practice it, have some fun with it, build a program to roll dice or something like that, do something fun with it. And again, I just want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Um, again, thank you, and I'll see you next time.